I usually uh, improvise, but uh, since they told me to come here to give a lecture, I kind of structure my, my lecture for, for you students. Um, first of all, I would like to start my participation by sincerely thanking the Berlin Institute of Management and Technology, and in particular the Center for International Affairs for the kind invitation, Mr. Chatur Berry, Mr. Kumar, Mr. Sharma, Mr. Naraj, and Mr. Barma. It's a pleasure to be here joining you in this table. It is my great pleasure to address today first year students who are initiating the master's program in international business. I take this opportunity to wish you a great journey ahead full of learning, enriching experiences, mentoring, and friendships. The topic I have been asked to share with you is how international trade and relations have been impacted by global factors such as the COVID pandemic, the monetary and fiscal policies, the global supply chain constraints, and the war in Ukraine. Actually, those three other factors besides the pandemic I added myself because I think uh, we have to look at it all together of these tumultuous times that we're living. So let's start by um, a briefly going one by one and then at the end try to see how they are related to each other. On the pandemic, as we know, on March uh, 11, 2020, more than two years ago, the World Health Organization declared COVID-19 as a pandemic. According to the WHO figures, the virus had infected over 500 million people and caused the death of over 6 million people across the globe. COVID-19 has had a devastating effect on health in all countries. At the same time, it has also had direct and serious consequences in the global economy, producing lockdowns which affected production and trade. The virus has, uh, has disrupted export and imports across continents and continues to affect diverse sectors in different degrees, especially in the area of hospitality, travel and services, which are practically shut down. The virus kept spreading during the 2020 and 2021. But luckily, several vaccines were discovered and produced by the middle of 2021, which began to lower the cases and death tolls all over the world. Lockdowns, without doubt, had a profound impact on economic activity by decreasing demand, shutting down businesses, and increasing unemployment. Countries were under a hard choice of maintaining restrictive policies to protect public health or allowing business to operate in order to let people earn a living to survive. This, this was quite a conundrum. The good news came with the production of the vaccines in record time, which allowed economic growth to start recovering in mid-2021 after the drastic fall of 2020 and has continued until the middle of this year. However, this recovery is not without some of the problems that came along. Mainly the threat of inflation that we are starting to see. Given the recession caused by COVID, many countries, especially US, maintain in interest rates very low, almost close to zero as a monetary ease to help the economy recover. And in addition, it gave a large fiscal stimulus by throwing money to the market. This created a liquidity bubble. And with supply restrictions lagging due to last year's low production, it created a growing inflation on goods and services. Now the Fed is gradually increasing the interest rates to try to control inflation without causing a recession. The question is if there is going to be a soft landing or we are going to go into a deeper recession. The next problem 
is the slowdown of China's economy, which was in trouble before the pandemic due to a real estate bubble, and it surged even more with the pandemic lockdowns. This economic slowdown not only slowed global trade, but also increased the cost of shipping by the accumulation of containers in China and inventories that we were not able to be shipped. This has been labeled as the supply chain disruption since the recession in the second largest economy of the world affects trade all over the world. The trade war with the U.S. had already created an interruption in trade and sanctions and protectionist policies by both countries had created unfavorable conditions that worsened with the pandemic. So China is also faced with a major conundrum now that another variant of the virus has surged in Shanghai. Again, they face the option of keeping strict health measures or stimulating growth, given the dramatic slowdown of the economy and the real estate inflation we have. The other factor that has affected global trade has been the war in Ukraine. The invasion of Russia to Ukraine not only will, uh, will leave thousands of people dead in the battle, but also millions of people starving. Ukraine and Russia supply 28% of global trade in wheat, 29% of global trade in barley, 15% of maize, and 75% of sunflower oil. The food shortage can last for years and high prices impede close to 1.2 billion people not to get enough to eat the minimum level of calories to survive. Millions of people will fall in poverty. Countries like Lebanon, Tunisia, Libya, and Egypt depend 50% or even 70% on the grains of Ukraine. Even before the war, there were problems due to climate change where crops were being affected by excessive rains or droughts in Russia, Ukraine, China, and India. This has created a food emergency beyond the war. Fertilizers and energy prices have increased. Costs some farmers in Ukraine cannot export their products because of the war and blockades of the Odisha port. Other countries have stopped their exports too for food security reasons. But not all countries have heard uh, and felt this crisis the same, in the short run at least. Russia has improved its trade balance. Russia's imports have decreased by 44% since the beginning of the war, and its exports have increased by 8%. Sanctions by the West don't affect oil and gas exports, and the spike in prices has boosted its revenues, which helped finance the war. So we should think if trade sanctions are really effective, or do they have a boomerang effect that is counterproductive? Finally, India's political position by maintaining itself neutral, and as an observer, its economy is expected to grow this year by more than 8%. Its strategy may be based on its large domestic market and focusing on certain export sectors such as IT and pharmaceuticals, allowing large conglomerates to expand their operations abroad and digitalizing and expanding the financial base of participants is expected to transform India to be the fourth largest economy in the world by 2027, with a GDP of $5 trillion at market prices. As you see, India is not putting all of its eggs in the trade basket, but mixing the strength of its domestic market with trade in some specific sectors. Say that the levels of global trade are now higher than the pre-pandemic levels of 2019. Exports of certain countries are growing at global digit rates. This fast recovery has surpassed expectation and is good news for the global economy. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, has however warned that this recovery is not even 
and it is not even, and that small economies and poorest countries are falling behind, which could further increase existing inequalities and certainly is a matter that concerns us all. Emerging economies have also taught it, it have a, a, a tough conundrum, which is to contain the effects of this global turbulence. Higher interest rates to combat inflation in developed countries produce capital outflows in, in the underdeveloped countries. They also then have to increase interest rates, but this will harm growth. But if they maintain no interest rate, it would increase the valuation of this currency. Quite a choice do they have. As Punta rightly points, this is also a negative blow to the um, uh, SDG's target 17, which is uh, the strengthening of global partnership for sustainable development, especially in what pertains to the expected goal of doubling at least developed countries' share of global exports. So trade what you are studying and will become great professionals, we can say moves the world. But it's not something that can be studied in isolation of the geopolitical complex of international circumstances that will always happen unexpectedly. We have seen that trade, pandemic, war in Ukraine are all related under the framework of economic analysis. That's why I encourage you to study macroeconomics and political economy. To become not only good technicians of traders of imports and exports, relying only on technology, but also good macroeconomic analysts that understand the underpinnings of events that will enable you to take better decisions. Thank you.